Welcome to season five of the Life Giver Podcast, a place for honest conversation and hope that will breathe life back into your military or first responder marriage. This is your host, Corey Weathers. I'm a military spouse, clinician, and advocate, and I'm bringing topics that I hear from the service community and counseling room to the podcast, where we can face the challenges of this lifestyle together. Welcome to the Life Giver Podcast. This is your host, Corey Weathers. I have uh, an amazing interview today. It's actually near and dear to my heart. We're going to get into a little bit of the story behind it, but um, I am happy to welcome Dennis Bittner to the podcast. Um, Dennis, there's so much that we need to cover, but the gist of it is you, along with Dr. Weinberger, have been working together with a a routine that he has created to help cure, I'm going to use that word personally, um, what's called the habit cough. And this is near and dear to our family's heart in that um, we have a son who struggles with currently a diagnosis of asthma um, to be determined yet, but where we had months and months and months straight of a chronic cough that no one could figure out. And um, we finally were referred to Dr. Weinberger and found you and found a common story as parents between us and you, Dennis, and your wife. And so I think what I want to start off with is just a chance to just introduce you first, and then we're going to get into a little bit of your story and how our paths cross and everything. But this is an exciting interview topic for me, not just because I want to share the story and share with the world what our family has gone through and currently is still got, kind of going through and testing out and experiencing, but there's a lot of um, families out there I want to say specifically in the military culture who have been struggling with mold issues, mold and housing um, with a lot of symptoms that come from that. And we're going to talk a little bit together about cough and what kinds of coughs um, there are out there and that there are some things that you can do if you or a family member is struggling with a cough that just won't go away. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about that with my new friend, Dennis. So Dennis, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) I had to cough <laughs> to set the scene. <laughs> hi, Corey, and hi, everybody. Oh, yeah, it's been an it's been a whirlwind for us, and uh, fortunately, you were caught up in the uh, tailwind of our little whirlwind. Um, I'll give a little backstory on me. I've always been, but never thought I'd need to be a researcher. I, I, in the military, I would always do a little bit more. Uh, I was in the Navy for I think about. Almost eight years, and then I, I got out and I started working at NASA. Uh, I, I was a photocopy operator, and I thought to myself, "I want to be one of those guys in the satellite room." And so my job allowed me to walk around and talk with people and research what they did, and especially the the words that they would say, like Roger and and copy that and and things that I was already a little bit familiar with. I found they were using in at NASA and uh, through attrition and people coming and going. And the fact that I had a security clearance, I was able to get a job as a, uh, a satellite controller. And it, it allows me to, uh, with my schedule, it allows me a lot of freedom to research things. Little did I realize uh, that, and, when, and, and we have, I'm, I'm married to a sweet, wonderful uh, person named Jen, and we have twins, Bethany, who we'll talk about, has a twin brother named Christian and a, and a younger brother named Hunter, and completely healthy. We've been blessed. Uh, I could get into the reasons why we think they're healthy, but that would be speculation, but we've just been blessed. Until November 13th, 2018. And uh, the cough that I started jokingly with was the cough that Bethany had. And, and Corey, you saw the video. It all started with one cough. And you blow it off as a, as a parent. And um, that day she coughed another about 4,999 times. She coughed 5,000 times in a day. And I said, Bethany, what are you doing? And she says, I'm coughing, Daddy. I don't know why. And and I'll relate uh, a lot of this to, to, to Jackson. Uh, you sit there and think, well, we'll stop, right? It, it, that, that's what everybody thinks. Stop. She could not, would not stop and nothing could make it stop. We, we used the, the, we tried to relate the term 
a sweet spot to all the doctors we spoke with, not a medical term, but we thought maybe if we had her take a steaming hot shower, that it would be better. Nothing. Uh, we thought maybe if she had a nasal saline spray, nothing. A lot of times it would only get worse. And uh, then we went to the doctor. You know, we started off with a couple home remedies. Then we took her to the doctor and uh, it, it didn't end like I expected or that mommy and I expected. Every doctor we went to said, we don't know why she's coughing. We don't know why she's coughing. And it went on and on and on. And so, and I think when we spoke, Corey, we, we, we found out that, that they have a, almost like a ladder. The first mm -hmm. thing that a doctor will say is blank, take yeah. this medicine. Then the next uh, diagnosis, well, that first one wasn't it. So try this and this medicine, or maybe a chest x-ray in our case. And I believe we had probably 11 or 13, depending on how you count it, different I don't want to necessarily say a misdiagnosis, but an undiagnosis because mm -hmm. I, because the doctors we're blessed with have all been top notch, but every one of them, I come to find out, I'm going to fast forward, then I'll rewind a little bit later. There it has never been a cure for what is referred to as an unexplained refractory, which means nonstop uh, or repetitive barking cough that occurs in the daytime. And that's going to be the hint, mm -hmm. the, the daytime. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dennis, then I, actually, let me pause you right no, there. Please, because please. Cause, well, I, I don't want you to go through the whole story. Oh, no, no, because, no. Yeah, because I think some people might listen to this and think that this is just, um, well, this is just Bethany's case, right? Oh, this is just right. Dennis's family. So <clears throat> I'd like to just pause for just a second and say that our experience was very, very much mirroring what you guys were going through. Um, obviously, I had not met you yet, and I won't, I won't stay too much focused on on our family. But just, just in case that this resonates with any other family, that this is not just a one off thing, right? This is something that a lot right. of families struggle with. And so we similarly, my son, when he was in about fourth grade, we had just moved to Virginia. I've been very public on the podcast with how frequent our moves have been within the military, which is more often than most military families move. But we had moved to Virginia and, you know, his cough came up once school started. And it was like you said, a dry barking cough, which we're going to get into here right. in just a, a few minutes as well. But again, went to the doctors because we were, he was sent home from school because obviously if he has a cough, that's nonstop, then he must be sick. And so therefore he can't be at school. Um, and even though he didn't have a temperature, it was distracting at school and teachers were having a hard time teaching the other students with him constantly coughing. So really he got sent home from school because he was annoying, not because there was actually a medically medical reason to send him home. Well, this led to some bullying at school because all of a sudden everybody thinks he has the plague and, and which is a whole other issue with coronavirus now, but back Correct. then it was like the plague is happening and you know, he's dangerous, you know, things that fourth graders say, but we also went to doctors who went through that ladder as well. At first it was, well, he just, maybe he needs some Zyrtec. It's an allergy thing or just stop that we had teacher, we had a uh, doctors that would even say to him, well, just stop your coughing. Well, we had tried that at home as well. And if he could stop, then he would stop. But we also tried humidifiers. We tried allergy medicine. We tried to drug him with Benadryl. We tried so many things at home that we eventually were sent to an allergist who was like, this is what it is. It's allergies. And so slew of medicines of allergies, and then still the cough would not go away until they threw their hands up. And now we're at a pulmonologist dealing with possible asthma. It must be a lung issue, but, and this is where I'm going to hand it back to you, Dennis. Um, we were also getting like, well, maybe he needs to go see a psychiatrist. Maybe he needs to go to a counselor because they had run out of options and uh, frankly run out of medicines as well. And if I were to count, he was probably on a daily dose of at least 10 different medications um, to try to control something that nobody knew how to stop. 
And of course, when they're recommending mental health care, we are very pro mental health care. We are both mental health professionals. Um, but as a parent, you're just so desperate. You go, well, maybe there's just something I'm not seeing in my own child. And maybe I'm blind to something and, and it could be anything at this point. So you really do reach this point of desperation. And Dennis, um, and this is the next question for you, this feeling of like, it's almost like all these expectations that you had of doctors before, like you go, you have a problem, you go to a doctor, they have a solution for it. And then to suddenly go through something where nobody has the solution is a very scary thing as a parent. It's a very helpless, desperate feeling as a parent. Well, when that happened, and, and I, I, I have to tell you, it was a slow occurrence. And then at one point I was working, I work a lot of mid shifts, like a lot of the military families you deal with uh, do. I've been on mid shifts my whole life. I was at NASA one night and I thought to myself, okay, game on. Because I knew that this little child of mine, and by the way, I don't give medical advice. I always have to predicate that. But I find medical advice. This little mm -hmm. child of mine is not and could not be the first child to have this problem. And I call it rabbit holing because I start going down a rabbit hole and then I turn left, I turn right. And I, I checked off everything possible. We, we checked our daughter's uh, pH level. We even went so far as to try a specialized honey because... Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, and I'm not, and, and again, this is just what I've found. As an example, the CDC recommends honey for chronic cough. And this is a pause because I think to myself, honey? Really? Yeah. But of course, honey had no effect. We tried dextromethorphan, which had no effect. And, it sh yeah. and, and from what I've read, it should never be used on which a child. Just like under Robitussin, seven, a cough with, with the DM. Yeah. yeah. And I, I found a, a neat little reference in my, in my, I'm now consider myself a medical researcher that the, uh, that dextromethorphan came about when the U S Navy was tired of its Navy sailors drinking. They would get a bottle of codeine from the corpsman and take a, uh, they're supposed to take a teaspoon of it and they would maybe drink the whole bottle. Uh, and coding and active duty military don't really get along that well. So they came up with this dextromethorphan and that was in 1953. And there has almost literally not been any type of innovation in cough management, let alone a cure for cough since then. And try as I may, I could never find, oh, and by the way, most important, and this is for parents who are in any kind of search for anything for their child, only rely on peer-reviewed and published mm -hmm. uh, documentation and question it also. A lot of times you can actually contact the doctor or the researcher who put that paper out there and you may be able to help them with a, uh, a new concern or variation, or at least you can get a clarification. But our goal when I, when Jen and I talked was only peer reviewed work from qualified medical doctors. And then it didn't get very far because we kept, we, we never found the word cure. Mm -hmm. We never, we only saw the word treatment and uh, suppression, but never cure. And this thing, Corey was showing no signs of abatement at all. Much like with, uh, with Jackson, yeah. it just, decided it had a, a, a mind of its own. Yeah. And I, and I, and I don't want to skip to the end part, but when I tell you what has been going on since we've even spoke, mm -hmm. it's fascinating. But so we were... Well, just so you okay, know, sure. Janet, just so the listeners were, I mean, this was the exact experience that we had too, as far as the rabbit hole of research. I mean, we were, Dennis, we were into... Um, we were taking Jack to an acupuncturist. Um, oh, we, wherever we, we moved, we had we had a, a an acupuncture treatment scheduled. Oh, you name it. Well, and now I we say had medical Chinese doctors. Herbs he was drinking throughout the day, <sighs> and I will tell you, interestingly yeah. enough, and I think this ties into where we're going to go um, with Dr. Weinberg, Weinberger, but. That was the one thing that gave us any kind of clue was that acupuncture seemed to calm his body down a little bit compared to anything else that we were trying. So we knew at that point that we were getting onto something as far as 
there was a piece of this that was calming. How do we calm him? Or whether it was he had over inflamed his lungs at some point that the acupuncture was at least able to calm it slightly, but it never took it away. It just was like giving us this tiny bit of hope and then would steal it from us right after. But we were desperate. We And, and you say desperate. And I'll, I think you might agree and imagine, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Bethany was cured after 87 days. I'm going to tell a story. I'll save it for the end because uh, they're in the middle of a gentleman who had it for over 25 years, mm. starting at the age of seven. But anyway, and he was cured in minutes. But we we were down this rabbit hole nonstop. And the same, and it chokes me up to say this too, the same thing that, that Jennifer and I said, uh, I think you you may have said or you can relate to, and for the parents out there, there is hope because we were hopeless, helpless, and forsaken. And we hear this. Uh, I started a little website called habitcough.com as a fan site for Dr. Weinberg, which we'll talk about more. But to the parents who have found the website and and learned about this, and also to the adults, that's a teaser also, each of them has said hopeless, helpless, forsaken, and lost. Mm -hmm. because especially now with the coronavirus uh even more because for example one one lady uh a mommy in in canada said prior to the coronavirus even reaching canada that her sweet little 10 year old child who would cough twenty seven thousand times a day bethany coughed five thousand she would cough twenty seven thousand times a day and and would could clear an auditorium because it was just so vicious sounding. So loud. It's so loud. So loud. Well, actually, hers went loud, and, and she coughed so many times, it dried out her throat, and it was whisper quiet, but, but still vicious. But yeah, so with Bethany, uh, we, we wound up at a pulmonologist, and two trips. And the first one, we, I should back up. We, we, we went through everything. We went through all the steps in the ladder. Uh, we heard that they, they might give her a diagnosis of cough variant asthma, but it just didn't sit with us because the big deal was the big story was that she would sleep through the night. And we heard of all these mommies and daddies who would have to stay up with their children for a a cough in the middle of the night. And Jackson slept through the night, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That was the one redeeming. he was given that diagnosis. He was given that diagnosis anyways, even though he did sleep through the night and he has never, um, every asthma action plan they've ever given, it was like, he doesn't do that. And and I, I wanted to think, and of course you can fill that also, I felt When we got to that point, when we were, uh, we had gotten the x-rays and they were clear and and everything else was clear, that the doctors were almost grasping at straws like they didn't know. And and you're correct. I wondered about the doctors. I thought, you're a pediatrician. This couldn't be the first child with an unexplained dry daytime only cough. What have you done in the past? And I had a couple doctors uh, when I said, well, when do we expect it to stop? And one doctor said, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Could stop tomorrow. Could go on for a couple of years. What? Yeah. And, no, and unacceptable. Exactly. But, but I said, hold on. And here's what I said. So then you've seen it before or you've heard of it. What do you call it? He said, idiopathic cough. And I said, what does idiopathic means? mean? He says, cough of unknown origin. I said, Oh, great. Now we're back at step one again. So it became, and again, I don't disparage them in any way, but it became a loop. And okay. So time, time went on, time went on. And, uh, and we, we wound up at a doctor, a pediatric pulmonologist here in Maryland where we live. And he said this, he said, maybe it could be that she inhaled a peanut shell that could have lodged in her throat. And I said, I, no, I don't think we don't really have peanuts in the house because we have peanut allergy friends. And he said, well, and then here's what I did. And, and he said, it could only be one of four things. And he, he went over his little four things, uh, uh, asthma and the peanut shell and two other ones. But as he was speaking, I had a Sharpie 
a black Sharpie pen and I had a and, you know, piece of paper next to me. And as a reminder, I wrote the word hypnotism. Mm-hmm. And he looked over and he pointed and he said, what did you just write there? And I said, hypnotism. And he, with respect, almost would not even say the word hypnotism. And he gave me a thumbs up and said, give it a try. Mm-hmm. And so that was a whole nother rabbit hole. At least I had an expert say, give something a try. Which by the, I want to just give some credit to my husband at this point, because when we reached this point, my husband had mentioned something like this, you know, my husband had taken a hypnotism, (laughs) a couple of sessions himself for a speed reading course that he needed to go through for school. And he was so like, what else can we do? Like, what if we look at hypnotism? And I just was, I, I will give him credit for that because at the time I was like, what? Like, no, like the doctor, surely, surely somebody knows something like, why are we hypnotizing her child? (laughs) Right. But I have to give him credit because you get there. Well, yeah. that's all you have left uh, because yeah. the next step for us was going to be uh, call and asthma, all the medication and everything else that goes with that, all the restrictions. And then after that, we even had somebody kind of in an offhand way say, well, what comes next is they might consider it could be a Tourette syndrome. Yeah, I heard that. Too. But, but she was not having a tick. It was a cough. It was a barking cough, almost like when I saw a document that said the barking cough of puberty. And like right now, a chill going through my body, a chill went through my body then. And I read this story of a little girl. And I said to my wife, I'm going to, when they mention, I'm going to read you a story and I'm going to say the word Bethany in every incident where it's appropriate in this peer reviewed and published document from probably, I don't know, it's like the 1920s or something. And it said the patient, and I said, Bethany, 12 years old, blah, blah. And every time I could put the word Bethany in, Jen said, that sounds like our daughter. Oh my gosh, the barking cough of puberty. By the way, if I were to, if Dr. Weinberger is to hear this and hears me call, even mention the barking cough of puberty, he'll have a conniption fit. But it was the very, it was the first part of that journey that led us to Dr. Miles Weinberger, where this will all end and then continue. And I thought, now we have something to go on. And then uh, because we didn't want to have the uh, endoscopy go down and look for a a non-existent peanut shell, Mm -hmm. I was balancing a bunch of plates. I was working and and looking for hypnotists in the area that were medical hypnotists. Uh, And then, you know, of course, we now hear this barking cough of puberty, which leads us down to a trail for uh, a different type of cough or similar type of cough. And then I found a doctor who, a pediatric pulmonologist who was a hypnotist. So I put the whole barking cough of puberty thing around, but that that does come back a little bit later, uh, uh, dealing with a self-imposed anxiety in the onset of puberty that I witnessed and there's no science behind. But it was around that time, I, I found a gentleman by the name of Dr. Ran Anbar. Ran, R-A-N, Ran Anbar. And he fit. He he checked all the boxes: pediatric pulmonologist, uh, medical hypnotist. Looked like a real neat, nice and an honest gentleman. I emailed him, and he wrote me back, and he said, and "I said to him, here's my daughter's chart. Oh, by the way, I don't know whether you did, but I kept it, and you saw it. I know a, a, a day by day, incident by incident diary. And, and and by the way, for the parents out there, if you have a child with anything, something." Write down everything yes. that happens. It's a five-minute debrief on, on your most valuable uh, thing. Every day, it took me five minutes to put in the log of, of, of what Bethany, what was going on with her. And certainly, I, I emailed a link to that to Dr. Ann Barr. And he wrote back and said, not me, not hypnotism, but I have a colleague named Dr. Miles Weinberger. 
It's like looking down on the ground and finding a hundred dollar bill. And you're like, mm-hmm. I needed that hundred dollar bill now more than ever. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I backtracked and looked up. There's a great website. It's called PubMed. Uh, mm-hmm. Just type in PubMed. I think it might be .gov or something. But if you ever need to search for a peer-reviewed and published document, manuscript, uh, study, study, whatever it might be, PubMed is the place to go. So I tracked Dr. Weinberger's work down on PubMed, and then the lights started coming on. I said, oh, my gosh, it's called habit cough. <gasps> And this guy has cured it, but he's retired. Mm. He, he, He cured it in children back in the 1980s based on the work that, and he gives all accolades to a doctor named Dr. Berman, who had a peer reviewed and published, uh, modern scientific document in the 1960s. And he's an allergist. Berman is. So Dr. Weinberger, who will, the story will be about Dr. Weinberger's work was based on Dr. Berman's work. And, and I tried to figure out how old Dr. Weinberger had to be by this time. He was out of the University of Iowa, but it said he was no longer there. And, and I estimated him to be about 80, which he is. And I thought, okay, what if this guy is still active? I'm going to send an email in the blind to his Iowa University of Iowa email address and Corey and for everybody out there, here's where the miracle just starts happening. Literally within 15 minutes, he replies Mm -hmm. and says, call me tonight. I was dumbfounded. And this is all on the website and in the video that uh, of Bethany dumbfounded. He said, pause you there because I want you to expand on what it meant to you because I know exactly how this feels because you did this for me. <laughs> I want you, I want you to expand on how it felt to have someone not only listen to you, but respond immediately. Am I allowed to cry? Yes. Okay. Because I'm crying with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, and this is, and I'll skip ahead then I'll skip back around our house. We have a lot of crying going on for, for mommies just like you. Uh, because I'm, I'm a conduit to Dr. Weinberger for a lot of these uh, diagnoses and cures. Again, I don't give any diagnosis, but his diagnosis is plain to see up on the internet, uh, up on the website. To have somebody contact me back and say, call me. Mm-hmm. I mean, call me. I, I want to talk with you. You could have knocked Not make me over an with an appointment a, three months later. You could have knocked me over with a feather. We have a really big story coming out. We call it the big story. And uh, we also have another one I can't talk about, but the big story, I'm not a writer of long. I make, I do copy, which is basically a paragraph here, a paragraph there. And I make websites, but I started writing and I, and I told uh, Dr. Weinberger, I kind of become like Forrest Gump but I just keep on writing. So the big story is going to be out real soon. It's already like 30 pages long. And the people will understand by the time we're, we're done today, how important it is for their children themselves and their parents. So anyway, yeah, it was, you could have knocked me over with a feather. He said, call me. So I called him. He's very courteous. I said, thank you. I can't imagine you called me. And he's just so down to earth. He lives in San Diego now. And he, he still worked well before the coronavirus. He was uh, he would take shifts working over at the local children's hospital called the Raddy Children's Hospital, R-A-D-Y. Uh, but he's pretty much kind of in his house, in his home right now. And he said, Dennis, you have to answer one question and one question alone. And I don't want any expanding on it or expounding on it. Does Bethany sleep through the night? Once she gets, and even if it takes a while for her to get to sleep, and you can think to yourself, Jackson, does Jackson sleep through the night, even though it takes a while? Does Bethany sleep through the night, even if it takes a little bit, but once asleep, does she sleep through the night only to awaken in the morning and begin coughing during the day? And I paused. I said, yes, she sleeps through the night only to begin coughing in the day. He says, I've, I've read your, uh, 
diary that I, and they call it a chart. I read your, your chart for Bethany and I can tell you almost with complete certainty, she has habit cough. I said, mm. I read your papers. I read your papers. Yes, yes. And he says, and I can cure it. Mm. Okay, so here's where it started. And, and, and you know this to be true. He has no problem telling anybody this. All these number signs started going through my mind. My mind. How do I afford a next day airplane trip uh, ticket for Bethany and I from Maryland to San Diego and then get the, the rental cars? And then how do I pay him for his fine work? And then what if he has to do it multiple times? I, how can he do this? I mean, is he gonna... and he said to me, I said to him, well, Dr. Weinberger, I, I I can fly out there. I'll get the money somehow. And, and I said, whatever you're charging, I'll, I'll get that to you. And he said, I don't charge anything and you don't need to fly out here. And I said, excuse me. He said, okay, here's a deal. And he may deny this part, but I'd like to think of this, but here's the, he said, here's the deal. I believe with almost 100% certainty that I can perform the same procedure, the same auto suggestion procedure via a Skype call to your house in Maryland from my office here at my home in San Diego. And it should have the same exact effect. And she should be uh, her. He didn't even use the word cure yet. All of her cough should stop. I said, you mean you can cure her? He said, let's just say right now she will cure herself, but I, I will facilitate it. And I said, but we don't need to fly to San Diego. He says, if it doesn't work, I make a deal with you. If it doesn't work, I will fly you and Bethany to San Diego and back. Mm -hmm. And I'll, 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 I'll take care of her in, in person. Okay, so let's review. He answered an email. He's retired. He, I called him on the phone. I spoke with him. He didn't charge anything. He was going to pay for our flight to and from, and she was going to be cured. Now, could you imagine that uh, given Jackson, imagine me being, uh, I thought to myself, I believe this guy. I believe him. And here's what he said. He said, I need Bethany uh, to be at the ready with a tall glass of body temperature water sitting in front of a laptop. Mommy and daddy can be in the room, but do not distract her in any way. Do not avert her gaze in any way. I need her complete concentration on me. And I thought to myself, I said to him, that's great. That's fine. I will do this. And then because we're not too well off, I thought to myself, I can only imagine after multiple times, he's going to need to charge us for his services. So I'm going to do an audio recording of this. And that way I can play it back and, or I can learn it and I can perform a script. If it's only a script, I can perform it. And so I set up my, my, my cell phone audio recorder and Jen and I, mommy and I sat on the bed across from Bethany and we had prepped her on this. And up to that point, and, and he, he said, always do this. Always. Uh, he asked what, what her worst time of day was. And we said 730 at night, Eastern time. He goes, well, it's always best to do when it, the, the patient is at their worst. And that way, there will be when you see a diminish in the intensity of the cough and an increase in the time between coughs, you will recognize that this procedure works. And we're like, we were ready to put Vicks vapor rub in between her toes and, and sprinkle <laughs> oregano leaves on her, on her, on her, you know, on her fingernails. And so this is a whole lot easier. So we, we, we got ready. Everything was put together. Uh, and then mommy and I were sitting on the, on the bed and we're recording the audio. No, no video yet. And about three minutes in, she's not coughing. Where is her cough? Oh my goodness. I pick up because we have a couple skeptical. Just, just as a review, she Please. was coughing 5,000 <gasps> times oh, a day. Uh, that's a minimum. We, that's an average. Uh, that, that day happened to be closer to about 7,000 times. Mm. People ask, how did we, we count it? I would do an audio recording, uh, count the spikes, multiply it by the number of minutes in, in 14, pardon me, 14 hours. And uh, yeah, so, and, and she's not coughing. Why is she not coughing? So I pick up my wife's brand new cell phone that we just bought with a high def camera. And I began to record it. I had to, 
uh, three minutes in, I had to shake my hand loose from, from mommy because she was crushing it like a vice, trying not to make even the single most minuscule sound to distract our daughter. Something is happening and we couldn't believe it. So three minutes in, I press the record button and thank goodness I did. And I tell this part of the story. I said it to you. Had I not recorded this, even I would not believe what we saw. Mm-hmm. Am I right? You saw that in oh. the video too. Oh yeah. Uh, it is to the people listening. If you've ever thought, wouldn't it be neat to witness a miracle? And I don't mean that necessarily in a spiritual sense. Take it, take it how you will. A miracle is something that should not have happened. Some people can assign a higher being to it. Some people can assign medical science. We just call it our miracle. And then all of a sudden I'm filming this, trying to hold the camera steady on my knee and she's not coughing. And what's happening? He's saying to her, oh, Bethany, don't cough. And if you feel like you're going to cough, take a sip of water on the tickle that precedes the cough. And now, mind you, he's been doing this since the mid 1980s. In a study that he did with a sister city, because he can't really do a double blind placebo study in a therapy like this, but he did a, a, a sister city study, really highly regarded, but not known. Uh, the, the, his sister city was from uh, the Royal Brompton Hospital in England. And then Dr. Weinberger and his team here, they came up with the same exact results. Almost every child who had had this occur was cured within minutes. So here we are, three, five, seven, nine, 10, 15, 17 minutes in. He's reassuring her, I know it's hard, which I always find unusual. I know it's hard, but you can do it. Take a sip of water on the tickle that precedes the cough. Hold the cough back. You can do it. This is exactly what Jackson went through. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. Bethany stopped coughing. About 20 minutes in, Dr. Weinberger says, and it's in the video, okay, Bethany, you're finished. You know what to do. Uh, just continue taking the sip of water for the next week or two. Let me talk to you because your throat needs to heal. It's, you've had 500,000 coughs and you're 12 years old. And then he, she, he, he said to her, let me talk to your daddy. To which I say, he certainly could not have talked to mommy because she was curled up in the fetal position, bawling her eyes out. I was dumbfounded. I was, and I've seen some things. (laughs) I was dumbfounded. I I got up, I called him up on the phone. And I always remember, I said, are you a wizard? (laughs) He said, what? (laughs) All I could think of was, you're a wizard, Harry, from Harry Potter. (laughs) And and he says, he said to me, Dennis, that was one of the most perfect sessions I've ever had. I only wish I could have video of something so, so wonderful. I've been invited to be the keynote speaker at an international Congress of pediatric pulmonologists in Taiwan. They're flying my wife, who's a doctor and I there first class all the way. I only don't have video of any curative session. I said, stop, stop. I have video. I have video and I have studio quality, separate audio. And he said, I need that video. I said, well, you've got it. I said, Dr. Weinberger, as a hobby, I I edit video. I'm going to edit that video down into a little documentary because we had, oh, by the way, when Bethany had not been to school for so many days and I kept informing the school, they even sent out a truant officer. And I said Mm -hmm. to my wife, I said, Jen, we need to have video evidence of this little girl coughing nonstop. Mm -hmm. Nobody would believe anything, Corey. Yeah. So I, I said to him, I have video and I will turn it into a documentary that your host can play for the entire Congress of pediatric pulmonologists. They will lift you on your shoulders and shout out your name. And what do you think he said? You would do that for me? Mm. I said, you rescued our daughter. She had just told us two days before, Daddy, it's okay if I stay in my room. I don't want to scare anybody. Mm. Oh, mm. chokes me up. So I, so instantly I, he says, you would do that for me. I said, Dr. Weinberger, he says, what do I owe you? I said, I owe you a debt of gratitude. I said, there is the check has been cleared. Everything's done. 
I said, fortunately, I just five minutes ago took off for the next week and a half, and I'm going to edit this, and you're going to have the final say, and, and then we'll see what happens. And then it got crazy. And then it gets crazier and even crazier, Corey, and everybody listening. During the edit, I said to myself, and I have to, I'm going to ramp it up because I don't want to miss our time because the ending of this is bizarre. So I, I said to Dr. Weinberger, I want to make sure that you have the final edit. So I'm going to communicate with you on a routine basis. I said, if anything important comes up, I'm going to call you, but I'll keep routine stuff to email. And so one day I called him up. He said, Dennis, something's important. Tell me. I said, uh, I have a question for you. I said, if you were Shaquille O'Neal or Brad Pitt, and I was a fan of yours, I would want to make a, a fan site. I said, but you're not a, you're not a, a sports player. You're a medical doctor. I want to create a fan site. And you're our hero. I want to create a hero site or a fan site called Habit Cough. And I said, I, don't want to, I won't give any medical advice. And I have to check it every day to make sure nothing ever comes off as medical advice. I said, but I want it to be a place where I can put all of your work and especially of this video of Bethany, if you think it might be helpful for any other medical doctor to see it over the next 50 years and even cure one patient from this vicious, vicious, uh, relentless cough. And he said, do it. I said, by the way, I don't have any HIPAA regulations. It's a little bit, I can get a little bit more flagrant and flowery and, and, and praiseworthy, you know, praiseful of, of what you do. And he said, go ahead and do it. Let's see what happens. And I said, but what do you think might happen with your YouTube video up on or your video up on YouTube? He said, like you said, if only one child in the next, and when I say child, that's going to be the next story here. If only one child in the next 50 years gets treated by their doctor, that would be great. I said, but what would happen if maybe a mom or daddy saw this and said, well, I'm going to just have them watch the video. He goes, I don't know. Never thought of it. He's going to give it a shot. Give it a shot. We can't uh, lose anything. And so then it happened with a single click of a mouse. The website went active. The YouTube video went up. And then about two days later, I heard a ding early in, the, in our morning. And there's a video, a, a link to a video from a mommy. And she said, my son has what your daughter had, but it's only a thousand times worse. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, my goodness. And I watched it with one eye open. Literally, I was just waking up and, and I had to stop, rewind it and, and run downstairs. Didn't want to wake anybody up. And I watched it 10 times, Corey, this little boy and the video's link is up on the website. It was literally like the strafing of machine gun fire nonstop 14 hours of his waking day. And the long story on that is a short story on that is uh, Dr. Weinberger referred that child to a local doctor uh, that he knows 15 minutes in the doctor's office. It stopped. He stopped coughing. And within four days, his cough was complete and, and went to cough zero. And then all these emails and video links started coming in from children all around the world. The one to this day that shocks me is of a 15 year old girl named Abby. We call her sweet Abby from, from uh, old bar in New, New South Wales, Australia. Mommy says my daughter has Bethany's cough or had Bethany's cough for five years, 14 hours a day, seven days a week from age 10 to age 14, 15. And she said, every night I would cry myself to sleep so much that my tear ducts dried out and I had to get special medicine hoping and knowing there had to be an answer out there somewhere that this couldn't just be my daughter. And then one night she fell asleep and must have hit the enter button as she fell asleep. And she popped up her head hours later after so many nights of falling asleep at her computer and said, I've not seen this video, mm. a kindly old doctor and a little girl who has a cough. She said, when she saw the video, <clears throat> her life changed. She couldn't believe it. She said, it's as if her daughter, Abby, instead of Bethany, was in that video. Mm -hmm. And she said, it was all I could do to keep, my, keep from waking up my daughter at four o'clock in the morning. But finally, when I could wake her up, I said, honey, do whatever this, this doctor does with the with little girl, but film yourself doing it because I don't, I don't want anything creepy to happen. That was just her motherly instinct. So her mom sends along a video and says, and here's a video of my daughter curing herself in five minutes from a five-year mystery cough. Mm -hmm. 
It's up on the website. Literally, it's Abby coughing, 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 coughing. And then five minutes in, the intensity diminishes and the, and the time between coughs increases. And within three weeks, she had achieved cough zero by watching a video. I, I just have to interrupt and say, at Go, this point, no. you know, when we, when we found you guys, we had just PCS here to Texas, which means we had to transfer all of the doctors over again. Um, we didn't get very far with the doctors in Kansas because we were only there for a year, which a year is long enough to just get reacquainted with new doctors right. review on current medicines. And as much, I mean, Jackson was having honey each day. Coffee is supposed to be good for asthma. He was started drinking coffee. Like we were doing, we had frankincense going in the, in the um, diffusers in the house. We were actually giving him frankincense in pill form because that wow. was supposed to help too. Like we were doing all kinds of stuff in addition to the Chinese. Herbs. Hopeless, so helpless when, and forsaken. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So we had just moved here. In fact, I came here to Texas PCSing in the middle of coronavirus. The boys and I got here two weeks early before my husband could get here simply because we knew it was hotter here in Texas. And my hope was that if we could get away from the spring of Kansas, he would do better and his cough would stop because he had been, he had been coughing nonstop other than sleeping since February. And so, but at this point it is June, February to June. He's like, it's not been five years, although he's been struggling with this for four years with like these breaks. And sometimes his breaks would happen in the summer. So that's why I was like, if I can get to Texas where it's hotter, then maybe I can get the cough to go away. I immediately got in, thankfully to see a doctor who referred me to the pulmonologist to get all of my referrals going. And I had my binder of all the information. I was like, he, my husband and I went into, even though only one of us was supposed to be allowed to go back with Jackson because of the whole coronavirus safety thing, we were like, so helpless, hopeless. We almost got into a fight in the lobby because we were like, no, we're going back there together because mm. you're going to get all the information and not just part of the information. Right. You need to listen. You need to, we don't have time. We don't have time to like barely scratch the surface today. Like you're going to listen to the whole story until we're done. This, this poor woman, we had never met her before, wow. <laughs> but we went in there with our binder, with all of our information, our masks on, Jack is coughing and we go in there, lay it all out and not like laying it all out with like, we want him to be on all these medicines. Can you give him more? But just like, you know, because I was seriously starting to fear that somebody thought that I was going to, that we were going to have munch Munchausen, Munchausen by proxy, uh, exactly. Munchausen by proxy yeah. that exactly. I'm harming my child by keeping you know in, him in all this medication. That's the point that I was at is I need you to listen to me say, I don't want him on more medicine. I want this to stop. And so this is the point where she kind of took a, a deep breath and said, I'm afraid I'm going to offend you. And I was like, we both were like, I don't think you can offend us at this point. Like, you know, unless you're going to accuse us of doing this to our child, like not much you could say, we just open to anything at this point. We're giving the kid Chinese herbs and frankincense. Like, I don't think you're going to offend us. And she was like, I have a feeling this might be something called the habit cough. And I've just, I have heard it before, but I just haven't had much of a chance to refer anybody for it before. And so we were like, whatever, just whatever. And she said, I heard him coughing as I was coming down the hallway. And I said to the respiratory nurse that was with us, I think this might be that habit cough. And so they came into the room with us. She told us about it. And she was like, here's this site, which was your site, Dennis. <laughs> Looked it up. Hold on. A um, med is it a medical website a or fan site? No, no, it no. It was your fan site. It it's was a, your fan site. That's what I have to say. That that always shocks me. They, yeah. they send people to our little fan site for Dr. She Weinberger. She pulled it up. She pulled your site up, and then she, which led her to Dr. Weinberger's site as well. And she gave us a very brief um, information that she knew. She didn't know much, but she just said, you know what? Let's look into a couple of options because we were at the same point that Bethany was at where we were looking at the only thing left is an endoscopy. That's an invasive oh. procedure looking into his lungs. Um, and I just was like, whatever, if that's what we have to do. But she said, let's try this because we can't do the endoscopy until we're cleared from the coronavirus. We have nothing to lose. Wow. So why don't you try this, go look at it and see if this is what he's going through. And then let's, let's figure it out from there. 
So I immediately went home. She kept all of his medicines as they were until we could know more. But I immediately went home. I went to your site. You had a contact form. I uploaded Jackson's video of an example of his cough. I mean, I, I wasn't trying to sound desperate. I just was still desperate from that day. But oh, I was like, here's where I'm tell. at. Don't think I'm crazy, but here's where we're at. And Dennis, well, you know this because you called me, but those listening, I hit submit and I got up from my computer and I walked into the next room. And by the time I could walk back from the next room, Dennis called me. Like it was within like 60 seconds or so of you getting that email that you called me. And I, I wasn't even prepared for someone to call me. And so when you did, I just lost it. Like I just didn't understand why somebody would just be mm. like, I, I'm not going to say you're always sitting by the computer. But no, I get it on my were. phone. <laughs> yeah. That, that day you were, and you were yeah. there for us. And I looked at my husband and I said, it's the dad, like the dad is going. Oh. <laughs> and, and he was like, what? Like what? And so we had to have terrible reception here in the house. We stepped outside, put it on the speaker. So both of us could be on the phone and both of us were in tears. Exactly the same feeling that you described talking with Dr. Weinberger of just floored that someone would listen because we were at the point we just needed somebody to listen and, and you did, and you cried with us that day. You cried for us, knowing exactly the pain that we were going through, the confusion we were going through. And just to have a fellow parent that understood what that felt wow. like was that had a similar story that I felt less crazy that, um, all the rabbit holes that we had all gone down separately, but together and why I had to step aside for a meeting. My husband stayed on the phone with you, but while you were on the phone with him, Dr. Weinberger is calling. So while he, my husband is still on the phone with you, Dr. Weinberger is now calling my husband. And I, and my husband tells me later that you said, if he's calling, get off the phone with me. Yeah, I did. I'm like, I got to go by. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he switched over again, same experience that you had. He spent an hour with us on the phone the same day. Yeah. Like within hours of that doctor's appointment, he spent an hour on the phone, asked him all the same questions that he asked you. And then at the end, um, and then said, go watch Bethany's video and let me know if you need more help than that. Never asked us to pay for anything. Never just, and I will tell you how I felt. I will tell you how I felt that day with you and Dr. Weinberger is that I had this thought. It is such the good of humanity to care about people so much that you would put the love of other people before a paycheck and that you would meet people in their, their greatest need. And that that was so um, life-changing for us, especially for me, that all I could think about was however I need to pay this forward, which I know is Dennis, what you've gone through, right? Like however you can pay it forward is how it's all I know to do because the kindness is so overwhelming. You just don't know what else to do with it. I know. The next morning we showed Jackson um, when we felt like he had rested up we um, and he would be ready for it. We did exactly what you and Dr. Weinberger asked. We sat him down and he watched Bethany's video and I took video of it myself, which I need to send to you. <laughs> and he started the video and and just didn't cough like pretty much from the beginning. <laughs> what, what was your thought with, when that happened? I, I, a million thoughts. One was shock. One was denial. One was, has he been faking this whole time? Uh, like exactly. I, I was almost mad. Like I'm not okay with you stopping this easily because like, it's been a I, four I years know. of a fight. And I was like, you know, I wanted to <laughs> wanted to call my son some names because I thought like, have you been faking this whole time and putting me through this? But he wasn't, I knew that. But I saw him struggling through it. I saw him trying. I asked him later, like, what was going on in your mind while you were doing this? And by the way, he's 12 now, which is, in, you know, going back to Dr. Weinberger's paper of this, or some of those original papers going back even before Dr. Weinberger, same age of all these kids. Yeah, the median um, age was 10.5 years. Yeah. That's about, I think he started at about um, eight or nine. And I asked him what he was thinking. And he, he was like, I just had to keep telling myself, um, I'm trying to remember what he said now, but he was like, he wasn't shaming himself, but he was motivating himself by saying, it was almost like, um, you know, only kids who can't are going to keep coughing. 
It was a lot more simple than that. But he was like, yeah. I, I can do this. That's and what he says. If I can do it, it, you can do it too. Yeah. And, that, and, and he thing. stopped. And, and just to fast forward here, you know, I told you, Dennis, that, you know, you, we had several conversations afterwards and I was like, I believe it, but I don't believe it. I'm, you know, we're just going to see it. Does, when does it come back? And, and sure enough, um, I won't go into all the detail of it, but he flared up again after going to football camp and, and he had not been taking his allergy medicine and we're new to t- Texas. So all the grasses are new, everything, you know, so we knew that he'd have a little bit of an allergy issue first arriving into Texas, but had not taken his allergies. His allergies flared up. Here comes the cough. And I was like, okay, then here's the, here's the chance to test this out, you know? And we gave him a couple of days until he was ready. Um, but we were like, okay, here's your water. You know what to do. It's time. Like you have to, right. you have to believe that this is um, something that can help you. And he, he, he didn't even have to watch Bethany's video. He just Stopped. Like riding a bike. Yeah. Oh, and before Just we have to get, stopped. before we have to go uh, for the people listening, it cures adults also. Mm-hmm. Read up. We don't have time to get into that. But we had a big story that came out. Untold number of adults around the world with up to 25 years or more of nonstop dry daytime cough have been cured by watching 10 minutes of the video continue. That's on the website. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And, you know, oh, I will say, if I may, hold on. And we've had it translated. Uh, it's in English, German, Spanish, and Turkish. And we're looking for, for military linguists to be able to translate it and wives and, and uh, spouses to translate it for us. So we will find if you yeah. have talent in um, being a linguist or can speak in any of those languages that they're needing, please reach out to Dennis because I know some of you listening do. Um, in fact, you know, we worked with some intelligence groups before, so I know you're listening. They're out there. <laughs> but um, I will say there's so many stories, Dennis, that are unbelievable stories that I know you've shared with me that are just life changing. And the, the thing here is that you do not have to suffer. Um, if any of these symptoms sound like you or sound like your child, um, and you're at that place where you need the support and the help, this is definitely something to look into, especially yeah. if you have, you know, Jackson's allergy issue, his main allergy issue is mold. And that's why I'm wanting to do this interview because yeah. um, so many of the military families out there who have been living in homes <clears throat> that were riddled with mold. And we've had so much going on with the DOD and housing and, and his mold allergy was not from the housing, military housing we were in, but I know that a lot of you are struggling with that. And so if you have an allergy even that's turned into a cough and the allergy subsides, but the cough sticks around. And it's only um, during the day. Only during the day. And it's a dry, not productive cough. He says, even though it might take a while, and we use Benadryl with the doctor's permission, even though it might take a while for the child or the adult who has this horrible daytime cough to get to sleep. The cough absent once sleep is his Dr. Weinberger's diagnostic criteria. And Uh, I want to affirm that because at at the place that we were at, we were giving him almost like a Tylenol PM Benadryl kind of (laughs) cocktail just to help him calm down and get to to sleep. But he, you're right. He was, he was asleep. And if he woke up to use the restroom, he would cough, but then when he'd go back to sleep, he was not coughing. So those of you who might be in that same place where you're like, yeah, but Uh, if they're not coughing when they're asleep, reach out. and, And also Corey, if you have elderly parents um, who only cough during the day, check the website out. We've had, we've had, we had one lady, great example. Oh, here we go. I'll, I'll leave with, I'll end with my story. Uh, Dr. Weinberger gets an email from a lady in England. She says, I've known my husband for seven years and he's coughed ever since I've known him. He's 32. He watched the video of Bethany with Dr. Weinberger, did it, everything because all hope was lost that he would ever stop coughing. Oh, I forgot to mention. She's known him for seven years, but he started coughing the week of his seventh birthday from age seven all the way through age 32. And he watched the video of Dr. Weinberger with Bethany. And within 10 minutes, he stopped coughing. It took him, uh, he said about 99%. I think he has like 10 throat clears a day, but he's almost at what we call cough zero. But from the time he was seven, all the way through puberty and uh, young young man, and and now he just became a father at age thirty two, and his cough is gone within literal minutes. You've seen it. I've crazy. seen it. 
And I say, had I, had I not filmed it, even I wouldn't believe it. No, Dennis, you have given us our life back. And oh. more importantly, you've given Jackson his life back. And I know you had said um, that Bethany was just at a place where she was just ready to stay in her room. And, you know, all of this happened in the same timing of coronavirus for us. And so it's a dangerous world to go out with a cough. And we were at a place where here, my son, who's extroverted, who loves being outside, who loves to be in nature, who lo- who's always been this free spirit, just bouncing tigger full of joy, right. had gotten to a place where he didn't want to be around people. He was afraid to go to school. Nobody was going to understand him. He was going to get bullied for it. And and he wasn't he wasn't going to try sports. He wasn't going to go outside. He had just resigned himself to live in a bubble. And this is what was worse to me. Worse than all that, he had gotten to a place where he had so identified himself with having a condition that was, quote, uncurable and unknown that he had started to see himself as special only because he had the cough, which is dangerous, right? That he was then afraid to let go of that because he wouldn't know who he was without it. And um, that's where understandably a child can get to with all of the attention and all of the uncertainty and to give us a chance to rebuild that in him and to give that confidence back to him to give him friends, to give him the ability to go out and be in charge of his world again is like one of the best gifts you could have given our family. So Dennis, thank you. You're welcome. I mean, we've seen people from around the world and and every one of them is a a story of hope and good momming on your part, Corey. Thank you. Well, it takes learners like us, right, who love to dive into that information, and I'm so glad that you did. And so a special thank you to Dr. Weinberger, who I know will listen to this. Um, Thank you for devoting your life to people, to loving people, to having Mm -hmm. faith in relationships that that you believed that people should have a high quality or at least a higher quality of life and to strive for that is such a gift to the world. And I, you know, I just want to say there's nothing greater you could have done yeah. with the life that you have. So thank yeah. you, Dennis. Thank you for, man, making me cry at the end of my podcast. Yeah. But thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing sure. your story, your family story, and for doing this for so many families. If you are struggling with something similar, and even if you're not, um, you know, as soon as I learned this, I thought about my brother who just kind of has like this just kind of every now and then just weird kind of... <laughs> tick of a cough, right? Um, That I referred to. Um, But just go and visit. I will make sure to put links in the show notes of Dennis's website with Dr. Weinberger's website and information as well. Um, You can find out more. Dennis, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome, Corey. Thank you very very much. And uh, good luck to you and your family in Jackson. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Life Giver Podcast. If you're enjoying these episodes, please share the podcast with other service couples that may benefit from the show. If you're feeling especially grateful, head on over to patreon.com forward slash life giver or find the link in today's show notes where for just a couple of dollars, you can help breathe life into more service families. If you'd like more information about me or Life Giver, head on over to coreyweathers.com or life-giver.org.